Greetings to you all and a warm welcome. This video focuses on the topic Fourier transforms. Fourier transforms are integral transforms which find a lot of applications in communication engineering, transmission lines, wave propagation and many more topics of engineering. And more importantly, it's a very important tool that is used to solve partial differential equations and integral equations which emanate in mathematical models of real-time problems. So this particular topic is a very applicative. We shall divide it into three parts. This video focuses on the introductory part of Fourier transforms along with the definitions along and its inversion definitions. The second part will be focused on the properties of Fourier transforms and problem solving. And thereby, the third part would be on Fourier cosine and sine transforms. To begin with, the definition of Fourier transform originates from a very standard theorem called Fourier integral theorem. This theorem tells us the Fourier integral representation of a function f of x. If you ask, is it that any function can be represented in an integral manner? The answer is no. So the statement reads this way. If a function f of x, if f of x is, is such that it satisfies the following conditions. Number one, the function is piecewise continuous. I am sure you all know the meaning of piecewise continuous that the function has a finite number of finite discontinuities within any subinterval of the interval minus infinity infinity. Number two, the function is absolutely integrable. Now what we mean by this in the interval minus infinity infinity, what we mean by this is that integral minus infinity to infinity, the absolute value of f of x when integrated will always give you a finite value. So if the function satisfies the two conditions of piecewise continuity and absolutely integrable, then f of x can be represented as an integral in the following manner. The constant that we have is 1 by 2 pi. We have a double integral representation where both the limits vary from minus infinity to plus infinity. The integrand is a function of t. t is the variable of integration here multiplied by a cosine term with argument as s into t minus x and the integration is performed with respect to t and s respectively. So this is the Fourier integral representation of f of x. Now this representation is termed to be a trigonometric representation of the Fourier integral. Now as we see a cosine term there, now this representation will be a trigonometric representation of the Fourier integral of f of x. Now when there is a trigonometric uh, representation, I am sure you all would be wondering, is there any other way to represent f of x as an integral? The answer is yes. And what is that? It is called the complex or the exponential form. So you can rewrite the above integral representation in a more simplified version and we call it to be the complex or the exponential form of the Fourier integral. Now you can guess that not much of a change you can see in this particular definition. Here we rewrite f of x as 1 by 2 pi, the constant, the double integral, the limits of the integrals are all the same, minus infinity to plus infinity, f of t into, we rewrite the cosine term as the real part, we assume the real part of e power isx, so we rewrite it as e power ist into e power minus isx multiplied by dt ds. Now the derivations are not shown in this particular video. We give you the final results so that it could be applied directly in problems. So this becomes the complex or the most commonly used representation. 
the complex representation of the Fourier integral. So very widely used in problems and we also use this uh, in uh, declaring the definition of Fourier transform of a function and its inverse Fourier transform. So now having known that a function is satisfying piecewise continuity and is absolutely integrable can be written in this manner either in the trigonometric form or in the complex representation. Now we are in a position to derive what is a Fourier transform of a function. So before I start that, I directly take up the definition of Fourier transform and its inverse Fourier transform. So Fourier transform and its inversion formula. So we are now up to deriving these formulae. And what are we going to start with? We are going to start with the complex form of the Fourier series. So let us rewrite the complex form as we wrote here. Now this is going to be copied further down. And small arrangements of the double integral are to be done so that we can split this given double integral into two single integrals. Now we are going to do that. We are going to split this double integral which I am writing now into two single integrals and we shall see how. First step that we are going to do is rearrange the constant. Now the constant which is 1 by 2 pi according to algebra I could write it as 1 by root 2 pi into 1 by root 2 pi because root into root is root 2 pi into root 2 pi is 2 pi. I keep the rest of the integrals as it is double integral the integrand is as it is f of t e power i s t e power minus i s x dt ds. So this is as it is. Now further I rearrange. I keep 1 by root 2 pi outside. I take only one constant first and then what I do is I rewrite in one integral. One of the integrals I write it outside. Then this s term, this term I write it along with this integral and then I open up a bracket. I rearrange. I write the other constant and all the terms containing t, I include it within this integral as the integrand. So which are the terms which contains the t? This is f of t e power i s t. That I write down here. So f of t e power i s t. Then this dt that I have because I am collecting the terms of t. I then integrate with respect to t. Close the bracket. And what I write outside is yes. So I am integrating with respect to t and s to get back a function of x. And now, so left hand side do not forget this is our f of x. Now look at the one integral within the bracket. Now this integral if you see it is a function of t. It is a function of t and we are integrating with respect to t and s is the parameter that we are using here and therefore the entire term the result of this bracket will be a function of s. So what I shall do now is define, I shall define f of s, I will call this equation as 1 and then I shall define f of s to be 1 by root 2 pi integral minus 2 plus infinity f of t e power i s t dt. This is obvious because it is a function of t as I am integrating with respect to t. Now I substitute, I will call this 2. I have called it as 3 so let me raise it and let me call it as 2. Now what I do I substitute 2 back in 1. So in place of that bracket I will rewrite it as f of s and see what is happening to 1. It will become f of x is equal to 1 by root 2 pi integral minus 2 plus infinity. Here the term e power isx remains as it is and what is the bracket now written as? It is written as f of s. Now we are going to integrate with respect to s. I will call this to be 3. Now 2 and 3. See 2 gives me the answer for f of s and 3 gives me the answer for f of x. Now these two together. So what was the original integral I chose? This one, the first one, the complex form. Now the complex form is now split into equations 2 and 3. So we have now split the double integral into two single integrals, one of which is known as the Fourier transform and the other is known as 
the inverse Fourier transform. So let me define of them explicitly and then tell you which is which. So first definition is the infinite complex. You know it's infinite because the limits are infinite. Now we are calling it complex because you have the kernel which is e power isx, e power minus isx to be occurring there. So it's a complex Fourier transform of the function f of x. Now how are we going to notate it? The notation is, that's very important. So please make a note. It is denoted by capital F of f of x. So I'm denoting it by capital F of f of x. How are we reading it? Fourier transform of f of x and is defined as. So how are we going to define it now? Is Fourier of f of x is equal to 1 by root 2 pi integral minus infinity to infinity f of x into e power isx dx. You see the integration is performed with respect to x everywhere. Here you have an x, here you have an x, here you have an integral integration to be done with respect to x. So what will be the result? The result will be a function of s. Now which of the two equations in the above which we have said 2 and 3 represents Fourier transform? You see 1 by root 2 pi minus infinity to infinity. Look at equation number 2. f of t e power ist dt. You are integrating with respect to t. I have changed that to x because it's only a variable of integration which can be changed. And so equation number 2 is giving me the Fourier transform definition. So the Fourier transform of a function f of x is a function of the parameter s and it is defined in this manner. Now coming to the next. So it's obvious that equation number 3 is giving you the inverse uh, Fourier transform definition. So let's make a note of that. That is definition 2 and how do we write that? It is the infinite, again infinite transform. It is complex because it has a complex kernel and then it is inverse, inverse Fourier transform. Now what are we calculating the inverse Fourier transform for? For the answer that we got in the previous step. What is the answer that we got in the previous step? F of s. So you can find the inverse complex Fourier transform for f of s. So I'll write it as of f of s. What are we going to denote it by? Because we say inverse, I will write it as f inverse of which function? f of s. And how is it defined? You see, it's defined by equation number 3, which you can remember it as it is. I shall rewrite it now. The left hand side will be Fourier inverse of f of s. What was the original definition? Fourier of f of x. Now we are calculating the inverse of the answer that we got after calculating the transform. And it is 1 by root 2 pi integral minus infinity to infinity. Look at equation 3. Go back to equation 3. You see f of s e power minus isx ds. So that's the definition here too. So we shall go back and rewrite. So the definition is f of s e power minus isx ds. You are integrating with respect to s because you want back the original function and the original function is f of x. Kindly note it's a function of s you are having s here, you are integrating with respect to s, so the result is a function of x which is the original function and thus this is the definition of inverse Fourier transform of the result f of s. So you please kindly understand this definition in this particular video because this is the main. Once this is clear, we can go ahead with the remaining properties. So looking at these uh, generalizations, let me write it as a note. We have now seen capital F to be written for both cases. First step we wrote Fourier of f of x is nothing but f of s. You look at the first definition, we defined Fourier transform of f of x and what did we get it as f of s. So that's what we have here. Now what does this f mean in both the cases? Is it giving you the same meaning? 
sorry it is not giving you the same you have to understand the difference between the two f's where it is applied here if you see it is f of small f of x meaning that this f represents the fourier transform operator so this capital f is an operator fourier transform operator operating on f of x to get give you a result a function of s so here what is capital f mean it is just a function of s so you see that so here it is an operator on the left side it is the function of s on the right side the second definition what did you write fourier inverse of f of s and the result is a function of x so here what does it mean let us quickly understand you are operating on f of s so naturally f inverse will be the fourier inverse transform operator and the right side it is anyway small f so there is no confusion in the second definition but when you write f on both sides it is very important to understand where you are talking about an operator and where you are talking about a function so next one more note that i would like to tell you is this term that i have used e power isx is called the kernel the kernel of the fourier transform now if you look at the first definition that we did definition 1 kernel of the fourier transform is this term the term that you have written here this is the kernel of the fourier transform this is the kernel of the fourier inverse transform so what is the kernel of the fourier transform e power isx this also this keeps changing and here kernel of the fourier inverse transform for every integral transform this differs so it is constant for fourier transform for inverse fourier transform so i shall use a different color so that you can remember e power minus isx is the kernel of the inverse fourier transform and remember the third and the final note that you have is s that we are using here is called the parameter of the fourier transform so the result that you get of fourier transform will always be a function of s so kindly note these definitions in this video once these are clear we shall then get back to understanding the properties of the fourier transform and how do we solve the problems in my next video so in this particular video if i summarize we started with understanding the fourier integral theorem then what are its particular two features of writing it in the trigonometric form and in the complex form once we arrived at the complex form we started with that it was a double integral we split it into two single integrals and then we termed one as uh, the fourier transform and the other as the fourier inverse transform and one more point before i leave i would say the 2 and 3 together are called the fourier transform pair now why is that name given because one represents the uh, transform definition and the other definition represents uh, the inverse transform definition and therefore this two together is called the fourier transform pair now similarly we shall also derive sine and cosine in the subsequent videos but for now we shall stop by understanding the definitions of fourier transform inverse fourier transform what does the notation mean what are its kernels and what is the parameter of the fourier transform so i hope this basic introduction is clear to you all and uh, meet you in my next video with the properties and problem solving thank you take care